Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Zone Star State Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Ishmael Johnson. Ish, basketball's here. How are you feeling? Feeling good, man. I'm feeling the best I've felt in a while because of that. We saw some games last night, actual games, not exhibitions, not scrimmages, actual games that are going on the record. Dude, I mean, before we even started the podcast, we just spent like 10 minutes talking about our favorite plays from yesterday of non-Texas yeah. teams. Obviously, we have plenty of Texas teams to talk about, but uh, yeah, it was a fun, fun week or a fun day on the the women's side, especially with some big uh, ranked matchups. LSU losing to Colorado, uh, South Carolina beating Notre Dame, uh, with USC beating uh, Ohio State. So mm -hmm. the, the women are giving us these ranked games. The men, what was it? USC beat Kansas State and uh, James Madison beat Michigan State. James Madison, shout out to James Madison, our friends up north. Okay, mm -hmm. um, a lot of games. I think three hundred of the team, three hundred sixty-three teams were in action yesterday in the yep. state. Almost all of them were, um, and so we have takeaways. We have results. Um, we're gonna do this a little different this year. We're just going to go back and forth. We're going to say kind of one takeaway or game that mm -hmm. we want to talk about at a time. Um, we don't know who's going next, or do you want to explain it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like, I mean, for, especially for these early games where there's no, like, you know, marquee matchups yeah. um, and a lot of the bigger teams, even some of the smaller teams are playing like NAIA schools or D2. And so there's not much to take away or talk, talk about in terms of like every game or result. But at least for these type of, a weeks where there's no like Baylor versus Texas. Um, we can at least just kind of figure out like, Hey, what is there something to talk about from each result or, or basically what we're going to do is we're going to give four and four, four, four takeaways from me, four takeaways from you. And you know, that could be a player. It could be a coach performance, things like that. So, Well, there you go. Let's start it. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to go first? Or do you do want it. me to go first? I will go first. So okay. the one, one of my biggest takeaways that I saw yesterday, because of course, we are an unofficial um, UTSA women's basketball podcast. Uh, they put up a really, really good fight against uh, Arizona State. Yeah. And they also did that. I believe the final score is 70 to 55. The yeah. biggest takeaway for me was that Jordan Jenkins did not play. And they still only lost by 15 on the road. Um, the biggest takeaway for me is that there's potentially depth behind Jordan Jenkins because Idara Udo finished with 10 points, nine rebounds, and Cheyenne Rowe finished with six points, nine rebounds, both in about under 20 minutes. So, again, the result is what it is, but our biggest concern with this team was when Jordan Jenkins isn't on the floor. And for them to go to a Pac-12 school on the road, I believe – uh, they started kind of slow, understandably. The third quarter, they actually pretty were pretty. Uh, they, they, I think they outscored them twenty to ten out of halftime. Um, and for those two players off the bench in particular to be like almost double double type players, I think it's something to watch for them. Yeah, they in the game two of thirteen from three um, played eleven players seven or more minutes. Uh, yeah. Didn't even get production from Elisa Coleman, who you no. know we consider to be a great compliment to Jordan Jenkins. She goes zero for six. Um, but, I mean, Maya Linton, Sydney Love, Kira White, um, again, wasn't an efficient shooting performance from, from them as a team, but they're sure. able to kind of manufacture close games against teams that are better yeah. than them. And they're just really tough, and they held Arizona State to 22-58 shooting. And that's yeah, they're, I don't know if we've talked about their non-conference schedule that much. It's a very manageable. No, so they have, they'll have uh, New Mexico coming up on Friday. Then they go at Corpus Christi, at UTA, at Texas Tech, at Sam Houston, home for Texas State, and then home for UTEP. So, like, that is a very interesting, like, if they go, you know, if they win one or two games from that, then it's like, okay, this team took a step back. But that's, like, aside from Texas Tech, all those are winnable, yep. like, 100%. Um, also, they had uh, – UTSA had 19 offensive rebounds. And uh, like you said, that's without Jordan Jenkins. So, and that's yeah. against a P5 team in Arizona State. So, yeah, I like that. I like that. That's a good uh, first takeaway. That's a good result for, for UTSA, especially since a lot of people won't know that Jordan Jenkins did not play that game. Right. Um. All right. Well, I'm wearing purple on my head ish for one reason and one reason only. And that is for Abilene Christian 
men's basketball. <laughs> there you go. Brett's, Brett's Tanner, Tanner time, baby. It's Tanner time. <laughs> I watched this game this morning. Yep. In its totality, every minute of it. And I was blown away on both sides of the ball in every aspect of how this Abilene Christian team played. Because last year, we, we didn't talk about them a lot because they were it was kind of a down year. They struggled. It yeah. didn't have, really have an identity. All of this, this game looked like a Joe Golden game. And it looked like what Abilene Christian, the Abilene Christian we know and love. That's what yeah. this looked like. I mean, from the offense they ran to the defensive intensity to the rebounding, which I thought was fantastic. Um, the overall effort, the toughness, they punked Oklahoma State on the road and left mm-hmm. with a 64-59 to win. And honestly, I'm not even sure the final score is as close as it really was because they led by like 16-17 at one point. Oklahoma State comes back, makes like a three-point game in the last minute, but then ACU holds on. Um, I also, Oklahoma State, um, there, I don't, in the Big 12 right picture, uh, right. I don't, I'm not very high on them at all after this game, but yeah, that does not I, take away from what Abilene Christian just did. Yeah. I saw that they were every, every national person that kind of mentioned this result, they were like trying to, I don't say like trying to make up for it, but they were like throwing, it's like, Hey, this isn't Oklahoma State's fully healthy roster. And it's like, they were, there's like, but this shouldn't happen regard. Like they were, you know, they were like also mentioning the fact that regardless the big 12 team like this shouldn't be losing to uh, ACU, but I agree. I mean, Arian Simmons, uh, Hunter Jack Madden, Ali Abu Diba. Like, <laughs> these, we were wondering, like, we knew Arian Simmons would be a uh, contributor for them. Yeah. But we were just kind of trying to start to wonder, like, okay, where are the other, where's the other playmakers going to come from? Right. Last year, they had to bring back guys like Joe Pleasant and, and like a lot, they had to like seemingly run it back. Um, and they really didn't get the production out of them that we, they were hoping for. And yeah, what did, what did Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma State think? They went five of 23 from three. It finished with 13 turnovers. Like it, again, like you mentioned, it was very much an old Joe Golding era uh, performance. And again, Brett Tanner was on the sideline of those teams, so he he's been trying to kind of get that edge and that swagger back. So if this is a kickstart to something pretty good, I'm very excited for what they could do this year. I, I was, I mean, I know they only shot five of 18 from three, but it yeah. was very obvious to me I, that they are a team capable of shooting the basketball at a variety mm-hmm. of positions. I mean, all five of their starters shot at least two threes and then yeah. they bring uh JV seed off the bench who can, uh, I mean, he went one of one, but you can just tell by the way he shot the ball. That, like, this guy can mm-hmm. shoot. Um, and yeah. he also had three rebounds. It was like the way they rebounded the ball. First of all, Arion Simmons, I tip of the cap, probably like the player of the day in the state. I don't know, sure. but he was, unbelievable even though he only had 11 points 11 rebounds four assists um he was only five of 13 it felt like every time he got the ball everything just calmed down everything just Mm -hmm. slowed down for that offense um you're able to run actions off him um diva i thought was fantastic obviously 7 14 15 points you can tell he's kind of raw in in respect but mm-hmm. you don't you can't really teach his athleticism and his the way he moves on a court and can get to the rim. He looked comfortable against those Oklahoma State athletes. Uh yeah. that was great. And then I mean Hunter Madden uh is just tough as nails. And that's a really good guard to have. So yeah. man, that was a heck of a performance from Aveline Christian and um a great, great win to start the season. My expectations have gone up significantly after watching them play that game. I was about to say because it what like you said it wasn't them pulling out all the stops it was like a very like very deliberate win so yeah, yeah I, feel I mean the they same didn't way. yeah it's not like they were lighting them up from three and I don't think they're gonna really light anybody up from three but they are you know I think we saw enough to be like all right they're deep this year yeah they're balanced and with if Arian Simmons you could tell he had that swagger about him last uh, yesterday to where it was like you mm-hmm. know he hits a three turns around you know is feeling himself. If he brings that, everybody else can yeah. just fall in line, and I think that's that's huge for this team. Um, so I mean, hundred percent. Yeah, they got NC State next, and then Prairie View. Um, NC State on the road, obviously, but um, I'm interested to see how they 
do in the rest of this uh, non-conference slate. They also have two random whack games in November. Uh, UT Arlington hmm. November 29th and SFA December 2nd. So uh, that'll okay. be interesting. interesting. But we'll yeah, I loved it. All right. So I'm going to go with uh, our first negative of the day. SMU men's basketball. Oh, good. Yeah, I had that um, written too. Okay. <laughs> so, are you have what? It's one of yours too? Okay, yeah, so they ended up beating Southwestern Assemblies of God. <laughs> um, shout out Swaggy. Swaggy. Um, <laughs> even though they don't go by Swaggy for some reason. Um, they ended up beating them. What was the final score? 82-63. But I texted you at the half, and I was like, hey, what's going on here? By the way, if you don't know them, that's fair. They're in AIA school, right? Um, it was only 43-39 at the half, SMU. And I was like, what's going on here? And so I looked at it. I, I, I obviously was not watching this game, right? It's a D1 versus an NAIA. I looked down. Sagu was shooting 51% from the floor in the first half. <laughs> And for the game, SMU shot 11% from three. Yep. Um, With 18. Anyway, um, I'm going to, I'm not raising the alarm bells yet because they got their stuff together, right? We've seen teams come out very weak against low competition in the first game. We've seen it happen, right? I'm not panicking yet, but if the issue with Rob Lanier teams going back to his time at Georgia State, was offense, and this team at best shoots 44% from the floor against an NAIA school in the second half, right? They shot 42% for the game, and then 11% from three total, and then 9% in the first half from three. Um, It's not a red flag. It's a little amber flag. It's a little. It's going from a yellow to like a, to like an orange to me. I believe the kids call it a beige flag. I <laughs> Is it a beige flag? The, I think that's what the kids on TikTok are calling it. <laughs> Okay, there you go. Well, I mean, look, it took it took 24 points from Zurich Phelps, 16 points from Chuck Harris. Tyreek Smith had a double double, good for him. But it's like, man, this is not this is an NAIA program. Like, I mean, this is yeah, NAIA. Happening? First of all, this isn't like this isn't even like playing like last year when TCU lost to Pine Bluff or something like that. Right, like, it's like that's even, a D1 not, school. It's not even a yeah, not even a D1 program here. So this is. This is these are teams that you would like see in exhibition games and whatnot. Um, so to be within four through twenty minutes is alarming. The shooting is the biggest takeaway for me. You're supposed to be able to generate and make open threes against bad defenses um, of the you know against athletes of this caliber at the NAI, yeah. NAI level, and for them to go you know Phelps zero for three, Smith zero for two, Wright zero for three, um, Hudson zero for three. Two of 18 from three is uh, an incredible number that just, that can't happen. And Phelps, we know, can score the ball, but he's never been a dynamic shooter either. Yeah. So now it's like, all right, still, let, let's say in theory, because maybe he you know gets it going, but in theory, if he can't shoot at a high percentage, then it, a lot of pressure's on Chuck Harris, the transfer from Butler, to be like, all right, you have to shoot 40% this year because Ambrose yeah. Hilton and Williamson – I liked them as additions last year, but then last year they disappointed me. And now this year, I, we said it when predicting their record. It's like, are we just expecting those guys to just take a step forward? Are we expecting, you know, the Jalen Smith, Samuel Williamson, Keon Ambrose Hilton, those guys to be significantly better? Yeah. I mean, you know, like you said, it's one game, but it they combined for what, 16 points on right. not great um, shooting. Um, yeah. uh, I believe they, let me see, they returned 10 players from last year and they added five, right? So that's a team that likes what it has going and just thinks they'll get better. Um, and again, it's, what is it, year three, two, three, two. just two? Two. two? two, two. So, okay. So again, still, still developing his program, but also he, we've seen Jamie Dixon like clear out and say, bring in everybody new, right? We've seen yeah. teams, uh, Buzz Williams, who's like, hey, this isn't my team. This isn't my roster. This isn't working out. Move them all out. Bring in my guys, right? We've seen that pay off. Um, it looks like Rob Lanier likes this team and likes these guys. And so this is what he has. Next uh, two games against Western Illinois and Lamar, and then they got AM on the 14th. So the next seven days. Hey, look. 
closer to their games. We've seen uh, Lamar wasn't bad last year, right? Like there, that's not a pushover team. Um, I'm assuming Alvin Brooks will have those guys better a year better just because he's he seems to he seemed to lay down a pretty solid foundation of what they could be last year. So again, they may come out and blow them out, but it's not going to be. I don't think it's going to be a, a walkover game. All right, my next takeaway. UTSA was just playing with its food. That's all it was doing. UTSA <laughs> men's basketball was just playing with its food. Uh, had all of us Oh, concerned. we had to get the mention. We had we, to get the mention. Had, we had to, you know, shout out UTSA men for beating Western Illinois 78-68. to 68. Um, But it is a game that went to overtime because Western Illinois hits a three, <laughs> basically at the buzzer, yeah. to send it to overtime. And then UTSA outscores Western Illinois 13-3 in the five-minute overtime period. So... You know, Henson was they were just messing with us ish. We we didn't have to. I mean, I turned the game on for overtime, thinking, right. all right, you get say this is where you fall apart. To their credit, they won the game. They won the game, yeah. uh, shooting six to twenty three from three, thirty six percent from the field, and oh, um, yeah, just not not a great showing. But Western Illinois, to be fair, was worse. Thirty two percent from the field, twenty one percent from three. It's a game that I'm glad I didn't watch the entirety of, but right. <laughs> credit to UTSA for getting to the free throw line 35 times and making 26 of them. There were 60 combined free throws in this game. So, and if I'm not mistaken, I think UTSA was missing uh, Jordan Ivy Curry in this game. So, yep. there watch you go. Out. Nice little, nice little win for them. Watch out. Um, watch. But yeah, <laughs> UTSA. I don't have their upcoming schedule in front of me, but. Uh, that's a win that they. Uh, that's they a, and to be serious, that's a win UTSA yeah. needed to have this year. Like, oh, they needed to. Yes, they absolutely, absolutely needed to. Yes, hundred percent. I believe a six point favor going in at home. Um, you know, it actually looked like there were some people there in in the convo. So yeah, I was going to say, first game of the season, get, keep yeah. the hype, keep some type of hype up. You know, yeah, you had to win that game. Couldn't lose it. So credit to them. Credit to the players, especially because these are all new faces for for me. Credit to them. Yeah. They have a very fascinating. So they have Minnesota coming up, which is probably a loss. But then they have an interesting run with Lamar, Texas State, Houston Christian. That should be, I mean, in my opinion, that could be a one and two, two and one, three and zero. Oh, like it, literally any scenario could happen yep. there. So that's gonna be a fascinating. But that that'll be next week through next Monday. So I'm actually very fascinated to see how that would go. So yeah. Uh, like you said, good needed win though. Okay, um, and I my next one is our first, or I guess our second women's basketball takeaway. Uh, TCU women's basketball. Um, I'm I was very very impressed with this game. Legitimately, like so they beat Oral Roberts 76-56, and I believe this one was on at four o'clock. Or yeah, so I had this one on in the office. Um, Sedona Prince debut for debut double double for her um 15 points 10 rebounds and they were not lying when they said this team is going to run every single screen every time up the floor because not only were they running screen, Sedona Prince is going to lead the country in screen sets I guarantee you because every set starts with her either going to the top of the key setting a pick or every every set resets with her setting a screen at the top of the at the top of the key it's Kind of impressive how dedicated he is to this because Jade Owens ran point a lot and she finished with uh, seven assists. She was really, really comfortable. It looked really no comfortable. turnovers. Ma no turnovers. Madison Connor had 30 points. So again, I'm very fascinated with this team. I I don't know how good they'll be year one in terms of competing in the Big 12, but if Madison Connor is their dynamic score, if Jaden Owens doesn't have to be a huge score for them and Sedona Prince can have like – probably her best scoring you know career or run of her career because i think she's she had one year where she averaged 10 but that was kind of it for oregon at her as a score mm -hmm. i mean this team could be really dangerous because there's no one you just look at her on the floor there's no one that competes with sedona prince physically right she's six seven she's very lengthy she's very athletic and so it's like you're watching her you're like yeah, if she's healthy and she's just taking a step forward, there's no one on the floor that can guard her outside of like, you know, the upper echelon of like that are going to get drafted in the WNBA. Yeah. 
I mean, 15, 10 with three blocks, like you said, in only 22 minutes, which I think is a reasonable minute load for her, probably in the 23 sure. to 25, 26 minute range. Um, yeah, you mentioned Connor, Mad uh, Madison Connor, uh, 30 points, 11 boards, four assists, Whew, six to 13 from three. Um, uh, Jovanovic uh, is another player we're excited to watch. Jay Nolan's obviously, yep. like you mentioned, I feel better about the depth now. I feel better about the offense. Um, yeah, you mentioned uh, she's going to lead the country in screen assists. Somebody needs to track that like they do the NBA. We're yeah, don't no Get that. Yeah, right. another uh, – I mentioned – so uh, this one's not on my notes, but just another result involving Oral Roberts. Uh, UTMN beat Oral Roberts in KT Turner's debut. So kind of two interesting big results versus uh, Oral Roberts teams. Yeah. All right, my next one, uh, Sam Houston defeats Pacific 64-57 mm. to 57 and – I feel, I mean, my takeaway is that this is perhaps a more balanced Sam Houston State team than last mm -hmm. year. And I mean, the last few years, I'd say. Uh, yeah. Five players end with nine or more points. And I don't know how deep they are, but you have this starting five. And if you just read out the starting five, I actually love this unit. Like Lamar Wilkerson, Devon Barnes, uh, Jaden Ray, uh, Sule Dumbia. And Cameron Hefner, that's a five that can compete with anybody at the at the G five level. Really, I mean, we saw North Texas beat them by ten, but North Texas, I I still think North Texas is going to be you know a top sixty team in the country this year. So sure, Sam Houston with that starting five playing, let's say twenty eight to thirty minutes each. I mean, they're they're going to be good defensively. Shot three of sixteen from three, so the three point shot will will become will come and go. Hefner will be better than zero for four, but yeah. overall, this is still going to be a tough defensive team that has I think has more talent this year than maybe it has had in years past with Dumbia, Hefner, and Barnes uh, being a dead. and then Lamar Wilkinson led them in scoring fifteen points, six of nine shooting. So I do want to credit him too. But yeah, Sam sure. Houston men, that's a. That's a good win over Pacific right there. I like that. I come combining that win with their exhibition against UNT. Um, because say what you want about exhibitions, like th sure, yeah, the coaches aren't gonna throw out their, you know, they're probably not doing a lot of opposing scouting for those, yeah. but like they're still running their sets, players are still playing, right? Like that's not there's like it's hard for players to play at 70%, right? They're gonna keep they're gonna go at each other for as long as they can. Um, so I think that was a that was a good performance from there. You mentioned Pacific, yeah, and then they get Utah Valley, which is one of the better teams in the WAC. Um, so like there, and then they get Oklahoma State, which all of a sudden looks pretty interesting. <laughs> um for Chris Mudge taking over that program, yeah. Like he's he was there um uh, uh next there, next next to Jason Hooten for all those years. So I think that's a kind of a proof of concept, kind of like in the similar mold to like what Ross Hodge hopes for the men's team, where it's like, yeah, this is a proof of what we have going and what we kind of want to continue. So definitely I like that win for them. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm gonna go with the other TCU team. I'm gonna go with the men's team. So they played Southern last night mm -hmm. and they dominated 108 75. Um I'm I don't know if this is hot takey or what. I think Jimmy Nelson is going to be fine. Like, I think he's going to be, we, we worry about Delaware and like him doing Mike yeah. Miles things and coming in from down. I think he's going to be perfectly fine. I think that what I saw last night from this TCU team is one, the rotation they kind of played, I thought was interesting. So they started uh, Jameer Nelson, Micah Peavy, Emmanuel Miller at the three, Jacoby Coles at the four and then Uday Jr. at the five. They went huge in this game, right? And so that allowed them to go Travian Tennyson off the bench, Avery Anderson off the bench, Chuck O'Bannon, Esau Mustafa, and Xavier Cork. And so, like, if that if that's their nine or ten, that they might like Jameer Nelson won't need to do what. Mike Miles did, in my opinion. If they if he gives them 60% of what Mike Miles did, and you have guys like Avery Anderson off the bench, with, you know, I'm not saying he's gonna score 15 points a game, but like you know, yeah. 10 to 15, and then you give Trey Tennyson 10, 8 to 10 to 11 off the like I I'm very I'm I got more encouraged last night by what I saw from this TCU team. 
because it looks like Jameer Nelson just fits like a glove in this offense. He finished with uh, six assists, five steals. Um, so I don't know. I, I, they were obviously able to go big versus Southern, but I'm curious if that's going to be the way they go all season. I agree. I, th- I think you laid it all, all out very well. I don't I don't even have anything to add from that. I think that's um, – I'm excited to see. What's their upcoming schedule here? So um, they got coming up. They have Alcorn. So they, <laughs> for some reason, they go on like a HCU run for a bit. They got Alcorn. Uh, oh, no, sorry. They have Omaha, UTRGV, and then they go Mississippi Valley State, and then Alcorn. So we're really not going to know much, know, know much yeah. about them until like maybe – Clemson December 9th. So they're gonna roll these teams basically. And they're gonna look they're gonna look really good until they play. Ooh, they have Arizona State on December 16th. So that'll be fascinating. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, they're gonna look there. I'm for me, this next couple months is just I'm interested to see this if that lineup last night, that starting lineup, and then they're bent that t- if that's their 10, um, which I think it's safe to say that might be. Um yeah. Or if that was just something versus Southern where it's like we don't need many much spacing, so we can kind of start, you know, Emmanuel Miller at the three. So I don't know. All right. My I think this is my fourth one, right? This is number four. Yes. For me? I believe it is. Um, Houston's back. <laughs> oh God, you're doing it already. I don't know if Houston ever left, but Houston's back. I mean, in our, in my mind, we said we spent some of the podcast um yeah. we spent some of the off season being like, hey, you know, Houston. I don't know about this one. I don't know about this yeah. roster construction. And, um, and they just they come in out. and pile drive ULM. <laughs> and won by 53 against Louisiana Monroe. And to be fair, yes, it is Louisiana Monroe. Why are you taking something away from this? The, they currently Listen, lead. This is, a, this is a D1 team. Like, <laughs> like this is a Sunbelt team. This isn't Houston. like them doing this to like D3. Houston is now number one in the country in offensive rebound percentage, uh, turnover percentage, steal percentage, and um, seventh in the con- or sec- seventh in the country in effective field goal percentage defense. Houston's yeah. back playing defense, and um, I no longer have concerns about that. Um, <laughs> in all, I mean, twenty offensive boards. They held ULM to twenty eight percent shooting. Uh, ULM was terrified. Twenty five turnovers for ULM. Oh, Jesus. Just an absolute beatdown in yeah. Houston, um, and that's that, this. But this is what we expect Houston's teams to do to yeah. um, the lower echelon of uh, the country. This isn't like you know. I hate to be keep harping on TCU last year where they struggled early in the season. Like that was that will never right. happen at Houston with the way that they play, with the intensity, the defense, um, and just giving opponents hell. So. Yeah, credit to them. Emmanuel Sharp, 20 points, leads the team. He's going to be very, very valuable for them with his shooting, four of eight from three. Yeah. Damian Dunn, 18 points, three of five from three. Um, just a very, very clean, crisp win, 19 assists to 10 turnovers. Eldra Carr didn't have to do – didn't play great, but uh, still didn't have to do very much here. So, um, right. yeah, Houston, welcome back. We've missed you. Now Houston versus AM Corpus Christi next week is going to be interesting because that's a Corpus Christi team that is uh, completely remodeled and now has to play Houston on the road. So we'll see. Again, not much to take from Houston. They don't play a top 150 team until Xavier December 1st. Right. Um, Towson on November 16th, I guess, technically counts. Oh, they're in the um, – the Charleston Classic, which I'll be at, so that's where they play yeah, Charleston. Okay. So maybe they play; they'll play somebody there that's decent. But right down the line, yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I think that's good. I think the biggest takeaway for me is Emmanuel Sharp, like you mentioned. Um, he's somebody who's going to have to have a big sophomore season. I think uh, Kelvin Sampson mentioned like he's not worried about LJ Cryer. Would he go one of nine from three? He he mentioned like uh, he's the best shooter on this team, and he was like, "That's not a speculation; that's a fact." And so he's like, he's not concerned about him getting off to a slow start um i mean we're done with the takeaways but i had some a little bit some more notes we don't have to go too in depth on them um so north texas uh women won they dominated of course they played north texas dallas uh but the one the takeaway for me was jocelyn moore six of 10 18 points and i had to go back to february last year for a game where she put up that that much that many points on that efficiency, right? And then you go back to her debut for North Texas last year, which was against Texas A&M, Texarkana, and she only scored 13 points and had eight turnovers, right? So for her to come out like this, 
I think they also set a record a record for points scored in a game in Burden's debut. Yep. Um, for her in particular to come out like this, I think could be really huge for her potentially, um, because we've uh, Burton himself said it's about confidence for her, and for her to get this kind of shooting performance early. And she only went, she only shot two threes. So that this was all coming from inside the arc layups and pull ups. Yeah. So I think this is massive for her confidence. Uh, they got Grambling coming up. So it's another chance for her. Um, and then they got a tough game at AM on Sunday. So if UNT wants to do anything this year, it's going to have to be through her a lot. Um, obviously, Deonte Robinson and, and, you know, they have other players, but like she's going to have to be a big part of that regardless. Uh, but so I thought that was a pretty big thing from her. Um, one of the others was, I think Joe Golding, maybe the only guy in the country that's mad at a 50 point win because they gave up 71 to McMurray. <laughs> they, they won 120 to 71, but I was, I was looking at the 71 I was like, Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a locker rooms talk from Joe Golding. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not great. Uh, Sky yeah. Wicks for incarnate word drops 26 points on Texas on 10 of 22, 20, 20, 10 of 22 shooting. Uh, 11 boards, three assists, only one turnover. So shout out to Sky Wicks of Incarnate Word. Nice. I from the Texas side of things, I don't have anything to take away. I mean, I mean, yeah, they beat. I mean, it's whatever. Like, eh, it's it's well, cool. I, mean, I think Dylan D'Souza, I think the only thing was like Dylan D'Souza coming back. I think is apparently what Rodney Terry said. He's getting back healthy, so there's yeah. a good sign for them. Um, and I think I had one more. Oh, uh, Drown Edwards shot nine of ten from the field. <laughs> <laughs> in her debut for Baylor, which I thought was pretty fun. Uh, in 19 minutes, she dropped 20 points <laughs> versus Southern. Uh, Baylor 185-53. And when I saw the starting lineup, I just like had a big smile on my face because it was exactly what we thought. It was Jada Walker, Sarah Andrews, Asia Blackwell, Darianna Little Page Bugs, and Drown Edwards. And you're just like, there it is. Yeah. That's the team. And Again, they sh- obviously they won. They should have won, but I loved seeing them on the floor. Um, and that's like that was supposed to be the team. I mean, obviously minus Jada Walker, but um, that was roughly supposed to be the team last year, and they all played. So there you go. Um, I was un- I was not able to watch Texas State lose to Little Rock, but it was fine. Um, the men's team, I knew Little Rock probably would win. Um, yeah. The men's team's remaking a lot. Caden Gums, their freshman point guard, looked really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think Dylan Dawson went like one of ten, so it wasn't the best from him. Yeah. Uh, so it's nothing really much to take from from yeah. that one. I mean, again, it, I kind of expected them them to lose that one, but I thought they showed enough to be for me to be interested. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we have to give a shout out um, to Texas A and M uh, for beating A and M Commerce seventy to forty six. A uh, good win there for the Aggies. Um, again, no major takeaways from that yeah. one. Took All right, business. Uh, I think they got Ohio State coming up on s- this weekend sometime. So well, there you go. Yeah, they did no, Friday on the road. So for Ohio State then SMU for A and M as the next two games. So okay, we'll see if we can learn something from Decent. that. Um, real quick, uh, who needs this win more tonight, North Texas or Baylor men? Baylor Ooh. plays Auburn. A North Texas plays Northern Iowa. I believe both of them. I'm gonna say Baylor. I'm gonna say Baylor just because I think for them, I don't say they need the win, but it would mean more for them to come out with this new team and look really good. Because I think there's a, there is a lot of hype, despite it being kind of a newish team. There is a lot of hype behind what they added. So I would say that I if Baylor. North Texas winning, I think, would be obviously great, but I think more of that is like, okay, job taken care of. You know, yeah. Baylor winning would be like, okay, let's let's start talking again. Yeah, both are like two or three point favorites tonight, so nice. We'll see how that goes. Um, mm-hmm. And that's it. There you go. First podcast nice. of the year of the season done. A um, few technical difficulties, but we worked through them, so y'all don't even know <laughs> what happened at the beginning. We just worked right through. They it. won't know that I just exited out of the. Of the of the recording, <laughs> it's just click text on the tab as we're recording. All right, he's gone. I just started laughing. Okay, um, but yeah, that's all we got for y'all today. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, leave us a like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, let us know what you think of what whatever your team did, whatever your team you support, um, how you think they played in the comments below, or you can tweet at us uh, at D- DCT Basketball. Um, 
So yeah, we will talk to y'all on Friday.